All right. All right, all right, all right. Hey, Moose and uh, Chad, welcome. Uh, thanks so uh, as usual for the Scotch uh, for Dummies right. doing a great show. Oh, all right, all right, all right. we got a hey, sound Moose issue. Hold on here. Welcome. Let's fix that right away. <laughs> Sorry, right, guys. Thanks, uh, for the Scotch, uh, for the Scotch, for Sorry about that. I think I fixed it. Let's make sure we still have uh, everything still working. Test, test, one, two. Make sure the levels are good and it looks like they're good. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was a hell of a start. <laughs> hey, Dram, thanks for stopping by, uh, everyone. Oh, Lee G, the hell's going on here? Well, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at a couple of new bottles I picked up last week, and um, I haven't done a valve in, in in ages. And um, I thought, you know what? Even though I had their double um, the double wood twelve, and I wasn't into it very much, but I do love their Caribbean Cast fourteen. I do love their Pete Week. Um, I believe it was a fourteen. I've had I've had a seventeen. I believe. So more more than not, I've been impressed, Balvany. So I thought, what the hell? Let's look at the single barrel, the uh, Sherry Cast 15. This particular one is cast number 1993. It's uh, bottle number 505, and it supposedly is uh, this bottle is one of no more than 800 drawn from a single cask. Uh, someone earlier, when I was talking about this in um, the Scotch for Dummies uh, feed, about what I was about to open up, they said uh, they asked me if it was a first fill. I don't believe it is. Uh, that would be a negative. Uh, it'd be nice, but uh, I have heard mixed reviews on this puppy. Um, some live by it, and some supposedly don't get much taste uh, sherry from it. Um, my hypothesis is is that this since this does have cast numbers and bottle numbers and draws from a cask that it might not be the most consistent um dram but those i do trust have set, stated that they do like it so i have a feeling i'll be in for a treat at least somewhat of a treat and also um didn't have a case, which kind of pissed me off. Didn't come with a can or anything, but they had the Fire and Cane, a new limited edition uh, from uh, Glenfiddich. So I thought, you know, we did a Glenfiddich last week. We did a, the Select Cast, which is a travel retail exclusive. And um, it was it was okay. It, it wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be. So I'm thinking um, I have heard uh, good reviews on this, uh, just in the distance. Nothing, <coughs> nothing. Um, in particular, uh, no notes or anything. I just heard uh, a decent reception for this guy. So you never know what you might get out of it. So I figured we'd take a look at that one too. I need a little bit of a more of a pour. I mean, I warmed up uh, with an inch gower 14 earlier, and uh, this one the pour got a little little low. So we got to take care of that problem right off the bat. Lee, don't look back here. There's something back here that you don't want to see. <laughs> Uh, Lee said he looked outside Hurricane Florence, flashed the view. I wasn't impressed. <laughs> Damn. Lee, uh oh, mom's in the house. You better watch that language. Uh, <laughs> wow, sometimes updating his lighting. Um, well, not really updating. I just moved it over a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure if it's worse or bad, or uh, let me know if it's too much. I can kind of push it to the side. And see uh, how that goes, but I figure well, let's you know, let's take a look. Yeah, I like the color of that Belvini first fill sherry. I am uh, I'm looking forward to it myself. But um, I'm trying to think. You know, what are we gonna start with here? Should we start with 
I think we should start with the fire and keen. It's a 43% versus a 47.8 cherry bomb, possibly with this guy. This is going to be more of a, I'm assuming, a lighter sweet kind of a spicy dram. They're probably a little similar, but I think we should probably start with this guy. So let's bring the notes up. Uh, I usually use distiller to get some uh, decent notes on the side. And this guy is, uh, like I said, a limited edition. Specifically, uh, Fire and Keen is the fourth installment in the experimental series from Glyphitic. It is a no-age statement, lightly peated series uh, release that is uh, first matured in X bourbon barrels. The single malt is then finished in X rum cast for several months. It is bottled at 43% and available beginning August 2018, which was last month. So uh, has been out just for a little bit. Um, I was happy to see many bottles in the uh, in the store locally to me, and I thought, what the hell, you know? I do like their 12. Uh, Solera is my, one of my favorites. It's nice. I haven't done a lot of older uh, Glymphitics yet, other than I love the Age of Discovery 19 bourbon uh, we'll get to that at some point later on but um oh my nice actually better nose than expected for the price price point on this guy is like 55 to 60 bucks so it's not a it's not a you know high price but you're not you know paying for the age or you know abv is 43 so it's uh, it's better than forty. I give them that. The um, you know, as far as chill filtering and color and whatnot, uh, I don't even know if we want to go there. Um, it's it's not super dark, but you know, it's probably got a little color in there. I'm I'm guessing. Uh, I don't know for a fact either way though, so I'm not gonna say it for sure. Um, and as far as uh, chill filtering at 43, I would not be surprised if there was a little going on. But you don't need to touch with this, this with water. Really nice, sweet, balanced with some spices on the side nose. And ironically, the first note I get is like a tropical one. Kind of like um, a pineapple but a smoked, roasted, uh, grilled pineapple. Really nice uh, cinnamon, heavy spice on the side, but not overbearing. You can get some florals in there on the side, too. Of course, course you get your typical vanilla and your um, some woody notes, woody elements in there. It's, it's it's a nice uh, mix. It's um, I like a sweet dram, so this I think is going to be a good taste. If the nose doesn't deceive, a little bit of um, almost like a little bit of a pixie dust kind of a smell too. Huh. You get a little bit of that like peat. I can I can definitely. Uh, it's not like a sniffing a. You know, an art bag or anything, but it's it's got a little bit of a nice touch of smoke. He's hiding the water from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that might come in handy for this guy, but we'll come to that in a little bit. Don't freak out. <laughs> There's a reasoning for my madness. Oh man, it's a really nice nose. Lots of really nice red fruit, strawberries. Raspberries, a sugary version, like you took the fruit and like just bathed it in sugar for like a good day or two. Mm. For forty three, a nice, um, a nice bit of a, a hit. It's not overly burny though, or anything like that. Forty-three, but nice little, nice little kick to it. The rum cast comes through. I can definitely taste it. Uh, really nice balance of the sweetness, but 
a little bit of bitterness to balance it out a little bit, not in a bad way. Not overly dry. Hmm. It's nice, um, nice white pepper in there. Definitely get uh, cinnamon on the back end. It's kind of, it's nowhere near the quality of uh, a Highland Park fire, uh, but it does have that, I kind of reminisce thinking back to a dram that Mr. Lee actually uh, was gracious enough to let me have a sip of, and uh, wow, Highland <laughs> Park fire is nothing to sneeze at. Um, this is not, does not have the 15 year age, but it does have a similar palette to it. Uh, without the refinement and you know three hundred dollars versus fifty five sixty dollars you can that's what you can expect you know but um not bad uh, well balanced i'd say if you like the sweet savory spice and even a little bit of like um it's not dark chocolate it's more of a I'm trying to think of something that's uh getting that that little slight bitterness out maybe a little bit of the the woodiness, the uh, some of the um, uh, this is uh, ex bourbon finished in ex rum, so the ex bourbon cask I think is given a little bit of that uh, that woody bitterness in the back, which is not bad. Really, uh, I think well done actually. I do enjoy this a lot more than that select cast I had the other day. I will say that. Um, I love how the spice and the sweet comes together. The finish is, um, th that's where it might lose me a little bit. The sweetness kind of dissipates. It, it doesn't turn dry, thankfully, but um, it's a little on the short end for me. A little bit remains though. It's it's a, it's a tough one. It's um. It's not you know overly you know complex or anything. Uh, it's not going to have you thinking about it for hours. But a nice sit down sip. Maybe wish it was closer to fifty bucks instead of sixty. But I'm not going to complain too much. It is a limited thing. It is specific. It's, it, I haven't had much else outside of the Highland Park Fire that has that type of um, taste that I can remember that has the sweetness. I mean, Longmore 16 has a spicy savoriness to it, but it doesn't have the sweetness that this or the Highland Park Fire, I think, brings with it. I'm trying to think of something that's that's along the same realm, but um, maybe that Glen Orangey Spios that has a little bit of a rye spice to it, but it doesn't have the sweetness either. This is more leaning towards, um, has the Caribbean notes to it on the side with the, uh, the pineapple, the coconut. So it's kind of a one of a kind thing. I can't think of anything else. And I think it's, I think they did a good job on this one. I have to say just the right amount of smoke, the right amount of spice, the right amount of fruit, the right amount of everything really. Have any of you guys had this yet? Let me know if um, if you um, get um, similar notes or something just off the wall on this particular guy, if you've had it before. Um, yeah, the collection is growing. George, thanks. Uh, you can't even see on this side. I've got some Glen Goyne, some uh, Ben Ryak, some McAllen, some Deanston. Uh, some Glendronic and Tomaten on this other side that you can't even see on the other side of the room. So this can only grow so much. I've been like stacking Octomores in the back there. You probably can barely see. I've got to figure out how to make this uh, visibly grow, but I'll probably have to take my art bag and Lafroigs and shift them over and leave room for a couple more um, 
distilleries I might get heavily into and grow from there possibly. I'm really uh, enjoying getting more into the bon the Bunnahavens. I need to get the Erina grain that uh, Mr. Lee had. Um, the uh, the Erina grain man that that is really a really good travel retail exclusive. One liter bottle. It wasn't crazy expensive. I think it was about a hundred bucks. And uh, man, it has some really nice notes to it. It's probably the best Benohaven next to an 18 that I've had. Uh, never tried a 25 yet, but uh, hopefully someday. Um, but that's uh, that's one I'd like to expand more up there. I've got a nice little Chig 18 up there too. I've uh, had recently. It's pretty pretty darn good. Yeah, um, wish the finish was a little longer. Wish it might be a little more refined. Not, not, you know, not too, not too insane of some requests, you know. Um, but overall, for what it is, and for the price, and for the presentation, and you know, I wish it had a freaking box or a can. But I, I think I think they did a pretty good job. I'm gonna at least give it a three point two five. I'm thinking three point five. I'm thinking the 3.5 is 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 definitely well deserved. It's uh, especially for an on a statement. I mean, it's really hard to do one well. A lot of competition out there. But this is one, as you can tell. I mean, I've only had it for a week, and look at that. <laughs> it's almost. It's like halfway uh, halfway gone, and. No one else has been uh, over to partake, so this is all me. So there you go. Um, so it might last uh, to next week, but that might be about it. Uh, the, the place that I go to had about five or six bottles left of it, so I think it'll be there for a bit unless uh, they advertise and put it on sale, that kind of thing. But uh, if they put it on sale for like 40 or 50 bucks, I definitely would get another bottle. I'm pretty, I'm pretty damn sure of that because I do like it a hell of a lot better than a monkey shoulder or a, a Johnny Walker Black or something like, you know, a Helen Park Magnus. Um, anything that's like real basic 35, 40 bucks. I mean, it definitely is better than that. So I think it's pretty, pretty well done there. Anyway, let's move on to the star, I think, of what we're. Uh, and this one's scary, though. I've heard some mixed reactions, but like the uh, Abela or Abana, which you might be familiar with, it's uh, one of those that comes with batch numbers and batch 53 versus, you know, 54 even is completely different, and 62 is way, way different. And I think I, I think my last uh, my first one was like a fifty three or fifty two, and my next one was a sixty something, and it was completely uh, different and not near as good as the first one. But I don't know. Hopefully, with this guy, which it does have a really nice color to it, and this is not chill filter, definitely said so on the bottle itself. Um, and let's see. That bottle is on sale now, Benny's for 45. That's a good price. I would definitely be all into that. Um, I'd say the um, it's well worth it for 45. Uh, 55 is where I would kind of draw, maybe draw the line around 55 is about as much as I would pay for that particular one. This guy is a different story. This guy is uh, non chill filtered and um, don't believe there's any extra coloring this being a sherry cask. I'd be surprised if they bothered with that. And uh, let's see here. Let's go for some notes on the side here. Um, Delvini was established in 1892. Speyside Distillery long dabbled in different wood aging expressions, but this particular single barrel release debuting in 2014 after a at least 15 years in European oak sherry casks is unique. No more than 650 hand numbered bottles are produced from each cask, and no um, and as no two casks are precisely alike, expect some variation from lot to lot, all on top of the distillery's typical profile of nuts and dried fruit. Bottle of, um, this is 95 points, 
six uh, proof, so that's 47.8. Forty-seven point eight ABV, um, and this particular one, like I said, is nineteen ninety-three uh, cast number five hundred five bottle, and uh, drawn out of um, no more than eight hundred, which is really wild how much detail they go into this. But uh, I appreciate it. I know there's some balvany nuts out there that probably keep track of every little different and nuance, and keep you know note which one is. Uh, Got notes versus another one. Hopefully, this is a good one. Let's have a little bit of a quick palate cleanser. What's everyone else drinking out there? I'm just curious. Hey, Bobby, you're never late to the party, my friend. Uh, I just uh, finished up the Fire and Keen, Bobby. You'll have to do a, a rewind on that guy. <laughs> Hopefully, it's something hot. Yeah. Next uh, show, I might, I might have to open up my Ardbeg Air Veritas. Uh, that, that's one uh, I've been not, I haven't had open in ages. I'm not quite sure why. I guess I'm afraid that I might not like it, but it's Ardbeg. How can I not like it? Um, that's definitely one I think that we'll have to, to dabble in and see how that goes. I, did I do a show on the basic Bomar 12? I can't remember if I haven't. I do have some of that left. I might uh, throw that one in on the side too. It's been sitting out for a while. Just letting it, you know, get some air. Wow. First note, which is different to me, is like a selection of grapes, not just white grapes or yellow grapes or red grapes or purple grapes, but I get them all. I get, huh, a really nice cluster of, and I can, I can distinguish the different ones in there. I can pick them out on just the, the scent. Uh, for people that say they don't get sherry off this, they must be out of their freaking mind <laughs> because that's the first note. I mean, with the grapes, of course, but I mean, this is no faint, uh, watery sherry. This has got some 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 power in there. It's really uh, holds up its legs pretty well. I think the mouth coat is going to be. Uh, on the heavier end. This guy, I didn't talk about that, but this guy had a medium mouth coat. It wasn't thin, thankfully, like some of the 43% are. Um, this one, I think, is going to be a little heavier even. Um, it's got some run, but it's not a, it definitely holds up well. And like this, it does have some nice spice going on, some, um, <laughs> Every time I say spice, I think of Arrakis and Dune. You old people like myself will know what Dune is. <laughs> ah, the spice. <laughs> I watched it the other day, the first time since like 1984 when it came out. <laughs> That's, it's, it's pretty good. It stands up. Uh, I mean, there's some some moments where you're kind of like, wow, I, you know, this shows its sage, but it's not a bad movie, really. <laughs> Some of the, the the scenes where they have the shield and the blockiness, where they're fighting and stuff, it's 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 one of a kind. But David Lynch, uh, you know, he he uh, didn't end up liking the movie for very much afterward, I guess, for some reason. But well, anyway, I go off on a tangent. Ah, <laughs> oh, mine. Not as heavy spice as this one, but. Um, I definitely still get a not just some some cinnamon, but some nutmeg in there too. Reminds me of those um, oh, uh, what do you call them? They're like a, they're not Danishes, but like the cinnamon uh, toast, nice cinnamon toast, but like in a almost like a coffee cake form. Not as much sweetness on the nose as compared to this one. This one is a little more, um, I mean, the grapes have some sweetness, but the I get more of savory notes in there. 
little more darkness, a little more deeper fruits. I think there's some plums and some prunes and the grapes, you know, they start white and red and, and you, you're moving toward more to the conquered, the, the purple. Hmm. Deep. That's that's nice. It's 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 almost got a red wine kind of a Marlot a Marlot smell. Um, it reminds me of because it's got subtle sweetness, but everything else is all that great. Bobby asked if I ever played the boom board game. No, I didn't know they had a board game. I bet. Um, I bet Bart has a that board game. I'll have to ask him to get it out. <laughs> mm, wow. Wow. Damn. That is something. That's neat. Hmm. <laughs> I thought I might have to have a little water, but I might not have to have any. I might put on something, uh have to get Lee to cover his eyes, but I might have to put a couple drops. But no, I mean, it's good out of the gate. Wow. Spice, spice, baby. Yeah, that's what this is one's like. Uh, but not as, it's funny that the nose has the spice on this guy. The palate, not, I mean, it's there, but it's not as intense as it was on this guy. This guy, the, the fruit is definitely a lot more forward with the grapes and the, like, toffee, coffee, like, mocha, with some uh, Heath bar going on. Hmm. Wow. It's a little hot, but it's not overwhelming. Really nice. Um, hmm. Tobacco too, some really nice tobacco notes on the on the finish. Really nice mouth coat, um, leaning towards a heavier end than this guy. Definitely, the refinements there, the age is is apparent. You can taste the price difference. I mean, wow, this is definitely even. I, I like it. Um, don't tell Abelard, but I like it better than Abena, actually. I think the age helps it. Uh, Abena is a non-age statement. It's got some nice power. It's got some nice spice, and it, it has Christmas time on it. But this is no joke. I mean, this has got um, the same kind of taste. Plus, you got the, the really nice tobacco, smooth, oily, buttery mouth coat, heavier like a Kleinleash 14. Huh. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, my friend, my buddy was the one that brought over the movie. And uh, I got him into scotch a little bit. And uh, so we just put it in and kicked back. I gave him like a smart bed grooves or, or a something uh that i had uh that i was getting into and I just watch sit back and watch the movie and it was just uh so funny because it brought back so many memories when i was little and, and being able to see it it's funny wow some yeah there's some chocolate in this one not on this one but on this one Oh my, like medium uh, cocoa, not like the crazy 70, 80% stuff, but like 50 to 60%. It's part of the finish. Medium to long finish. Don't look, Lee. I'm going to do a little something here. Doing the board game for two hundred dollars, Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's insane. 
That's insane. That must be like one of those like retro. They've only made like 50 of them and somebody still has it unopened or something that's trying to sell it. That's the only thing I can think of. Here we go. Oh, just a little bit. See, that wasn't much, Lee. You don't have to be uh, pissed off about that. <laughs> Excuse me. I think this will bring out a little more creaminess. It'll take down the hotness just a little bitty bit. This is not really overly that hot being 47.8. We'll say 48%. It's, it's pretty much at the sweet spot. But I just want to see if there's anything else I can dig out. And sometimes a couple drops of water just really makes it easier to let those things come to the surface a little more. Wow. Really nice mouth coat in that finish. It's almost like you're eating a big, big handful of movie butter popcorn and just it's been sitting in there for like a half hour. <laughs> hey, uh, Mose Chun. Mose Chun? I might not be pronouncing that correctly, but I'm trying. Hi, everyone. Uh, would the Belvin Caribbean Cast 14 be a good bridge between your two presentations? Um, when you're saying your two presentations, are you talking about these two? The Caribbean 14 is, is if you take this guy and remove the spice from it, but took the age of this guy and put it on it. Um, I guess it's it's it could be sort of in the family, but the spice is what really is different. These two both have a lot of spice involved with them. The Caribbean 14 has the age, it has the tropical that this guy does. So if that makes any sense to you, hopefully that'll bring it out. But so what's the uh, last bottle you guys killed? I just finished the Brooklady Bear Barley. It was middle of the road, no peat, but solid malt profile. Ooh. Ooh, a bottle I killed. I, I finished out almost. I don't think I finished it, finished it, but I'm pretty damn close to that Glen going 18. And it's not bad. I, I like the refinement in it. I like the age, but the the light mouth coat of it is the only thing with Glen Goines I'm kind of not as into as I am other whiskeys. Uh, the flavor's great though. I would love to try a uh, 21 or 25, but I don't know if the mouth coats ever get any heavier on the uh, the older versions because uh, you know the 18 and 15. Uh, I think I've had a 12. I've never tried a 10, but you know it's probably not that great. I imagine, um, but they uh, are all pretty uh, light on the uh, profile. So I'm not sure about that deal. Lee says that Caribbean Belvini is a dark horse favorite of mine. It's too expensive, but it's tasty for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's the story about, unfortunately, about Belvini uh, a lot of the time. They're kind of reminiscent to me of McAllen, where they have nice whiskey. They do have some nice age you know, profiles but they get really pricey when you get above the 15s. Same with McAllen. It's like you can, you know, 12s, the 15s, 18s, that's where the affordability kind of stops. And then when you get to the above the 18s, it's like, wow, well, you better start doing that. Because <laughs> it's cray-cray. Oh, my some of these uh, prices, some of these guys come up with on some of these, man, it's just like, wow. I mean, and, and I have to say, our big is, is, is not a mean to that with their, you know, uh, committee releases. Uh, I mean, they try to do the right thing and release it at like $120, $110, which is fair. The problem is they only have so many. And then after a week or two later, if you want to go back and get it, like if right now, if I want to try to get a supernova, which was about, um, I think it was 2015, 2016. So we're only talking a few years of a release. But I, I would have to shell out four or $500 to get that model. Uh, even though it's not a statement, it's, you know, I'm sure it's good to an extent, but it's just 
that price because of the rarity. It's not technically worth four or five hundred dollars. It's like it might be worth the hundred and ten, hundred and twenty like they charged for it initially, but you know, it's, 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 some of these prices get crazy. Hmm. This is a, a, a definitely a, a new favorite, I have to say. This is definitely going to, um, I think, uh, I would uh, definitely consider this more of a fall winter dream. It's a heavier, you know, spicier. It's, uh, but, you know, if it's 100 degrees outside, I would still drink it too. <laughs> there you go. Uh oh, well, I was talking about retirement strategies. <laughs> I'm afraid to look. <laughs> Caribbean is good, but the double wood is overrated, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree, Vegas. The uh, the double wood. Uh, now, I haven't tried the 21. I, I don't think, but the basic 12 was just not. I, I, I was surprised that people were like really into it because when I tasted it, I would much rather throw my money for a 12, like an Arbeg 10 or a Lafroig 10 or. Or something that has a little more of an more of an intense profile to it, but that's the thing. If I want to go for a young whiskey, I go for an Isla or a Campbelltown. If I want to go for refinement, ag you know, aged, well aged stuff, that's when you go looking for you know McAllen's and um, let me stick with you know some of these Islas and Campbelltowns too, but. Uh, that's when you go to like Ball Blair or or something a little little different. That's just my that's been my experience on it. Kevlin's one of my favorite distillers. You can't go wrong with their non-entry whiskeys. Yeah, Kevlin's pretty good. We had their Solist and their uh, what is that Vino? Um, gosh, what is that second word? <laughs> I'm gonna butcher it, but you know what the one I'm talking about. They had a couple of drams we tried at um, yeah the Vino Bar Baric broke. Barik. I'm going to guess Barik, but Vino Sherry, Manzanilla casks. Yeah, man, all over all that. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Dram. Uh, good to see you as usual. And hopefully, um, we'll run into each other next week and um, I'll have something different. Barrick K. Barrick. Barrick K. Barrick. <laughs> Can you type it phonetically? <laughs> Everyone says double wood twelve is a good value. Nice guys, the seventeen double wood is not that great, in my humble opinion. The fifteen sure is my favorite of that line. I haven't tried anything older. Yeah, I would love. They, I'm sure the price would be just absolutely crazy. And I'm with you, everyone. This is probably my favorite balcony I've ever had. Um, a twenty, uh, eighteen. We'll just stick with 18 to not go crazy with the price. So an 18 version of this, man, would be ideal. Hey, Lee, you probably, if, if there wasn't, if one exists, you probably have it. Barik. Okay, Barik. Vino Barik. That's easy to say. I just have to remember. <laughs> Lee, let me know if you've got a, a Balvenie single barrel mm. sherry cask 18, if that even exists. If you do, man, we might have to... Uh, I might have to trade or do something because <laughs> I got to try that. I haven't seen one before. Lee's uh, talking to Steven about I've got a few Solus bottles that become collectible and it's not a good idea to open them. With the Amatiado and the Amazonia and the PX is a stain. Wow. Haven't collected or done, I mean, I've tasted them, but never uh, bothered uh, getting to Cavalons because they're um, outside of the. Uh, Normal Scotch realm, and I I got plenty to look for here <laughs> in Scotch land versus uh, going outside. But but it's it's a nice taste. I'll, I'll give them credit. Um, and Paul John's got some nice stuff too. I've had on the side uh, through samples that, um, and that's an Indian um, uh, distiller, I believe. And uh, Emirates, another one that's uh, surprised me in a good way. Uh, their rye is uh, pretty damn good. So. It's worth the dabble in. Uh, as far as collecting, though, I'm sticking to uh, my little realm <laughs> and uh, try not to go too far out. But uh, this this balcony, man, this has definitely got me looking uh, closer toward uh, space side. I want to say at space side, right? Yeah. 
definitely has that that nice uh, taste. I have to say, I think I do like this uh, better than any other space out that I can remember. Wow, it's right up there with a the really solid Glendroni too. It's funny, I told you guys about, it's been a few months at least, if not six months ago, that the Glendronic was releasing the Revival again, and guess what? It's coming. It's not here in America yet, but uh, 2019, it's coming, and um, really looking forward to it. I just hope Rachel Berry from Bound Foreman uh, hasn't mucked with the... Um, the recipe too much and hopefully it's reminiscent of what we're um, used to having so that's going to be a fun taste and if it if it's like this i think they're on to something but um that's one i'm looking forward to trying i don't have a, a revival bottle, bottle here and i've had the 18 21 8 12 peated peated portwood um had a lot of different Glendronics at this point, but uh, the 15 has not been uh, available for quite some time, so that's one I'm looking forward to trying. Oh, mom's off to replace her old phone. <laughs> well, they got new phones out, so hopefully uh, that'll work. Oh, sorry, I missed your post there, uh, everyone. I just got the Peat week, and I was disappointed and likes honey vanilla known for one of my pen tape. Well, I tell you what, everyone, I know what you're saying um, on that. The thing, though, I think that the reason why people like the Peat week from Belvini being the 14 or the 17 is that their version, even though it is in most Peats, unfortunately, unless you get into the sherry, uh, really nice sherry, you know, sherry mixes, are a bit one-dimensional. But Balvenie's version of peat that they use is actually pretty well done. Um, and I know you're not really into the peat itself that much, and that might be the only reason why you're not really into it. But um, I don't know. I, I've had lots of other peated. Uh, whiskeys like the Tum and Tool, P.D. Tang, or the Anak Flouter, or the, I mean, some of them, it just, it, it just doesn't do it for me. It just, just doesn't have the right taste, the right balance, the right something. But Belvini's uh, Pete Week uh, actually had, it, had that and did it for me, so I don't know. But I want to argue with you on the, um, on the, um, one dimensional aspect of it. The 2013. See, do, do, was that a year statement, uh, everyone? Because I, I noticed Stephen was agreeing with you on that one. I've um, done the 14 and 17, I want to say. And those were 14 and 17 year versions. Was that 2013 a year version or NAS? That might have been the reason why it was so, um, you know, not pleasing but i want to see what what you say if, if it's a year statement or if it's just a 100 percent the 2002 is better huh. it's twice i've heard everyone say that today it makes me worry about opening my bottle i don't want to get disappointed huh so you're making a slush have more complexity along with the p yeah yeah it's the new one it's a 14, but bottled in 2003. Okay. Maybe the one I had was a 17, I want to say. I'm trying to remember. I had one. I liked it. I, can't, I, thought, I thought I had both, but it might have just been the 17. It's been a long time, so I'm, I'm trying to dig back in memory. I'll have to look through. Um, like, Unfortunately, I've got like 200 notes on the stiller by now, but I'll have to go back and see if I can figure out which version it was. But um I think it might have been the 17, and that was a, a decent one. But the 14, maybe, is the one I haven't had yet. It's still, but not bottled, sorry, in 2003. Yeah. Hmm. 
That's interesting. I had to dig that one up and, and take another look. Um, but yeah, getting get, and that's why I kind of stick to ILF. I want a peated whiskey. There's so many choices from the Freud and Ardbeg alone, not even counting Lagavulin, Kilhoman. Um, I mean, even Brennohaven's got some peated stuff, but I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest with you. The Cook Vaughan is okay, but. Um, but Springbank, Campbelltown, Clacarian's got a little peat in it over there behind me. Um, Glen Scotia's got a little slight peat going on with your 15 Victoriana. So, I mean, there's and La Che, I mean, I, there, that's another one. It's not Isla, but it's uh, Islands, I believe. And that's uh, Metallica, of course, pretty well done peat. So if I want peat, I'm going to probably stick to, uh, to the, um, you know, Allen Campbelltown, that's where it's at, my friends. Uh, Steven says, you probably had the 17 peak cast, which was an H and a peak cast. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Lee says, we need to leave these NAS PETA whiskeys alone, especially if they aren't from Alice. Stop supporting me, <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm with you there. Uh, it's true. I will say, though, I know I think it does have a year statement. It's a 10. That been right curiosity. So not, I've had the regular 10. And been content with it, but um, the place where I get my stuff, he was like, "Hey, try this Curiosity's Ten. And uh, I tried it, and for being Ryan, it, I, I was surprised at how well done the Pete was. It was actually pretty good. If you like Pete, you know, I think you'd actually you would dig that uh, bottle. Um, so Ben Ryan, uh, and there's 17 some decimal man. That's pretty good stuff too. Excuse me. Um, Ryan says I've heard that O2. Is better than the O three P week, huh? O two is better than the O three. Yeah, that's what's so. That's what's tough, man. It's so crazy with these year releases, and they've got Pete week, but they have a seventeen versus a fourteen, and oh my, it's hard enough to keep up with all these other distilleries. More or less, another one. <laughs> It's like, wow, once you take in all 250, 300 distilleries, it's like, my gosh, it's a lot to keep up with. And even if you take half of them that do peated stuff, it's still a boatload of stuff to keep up with. It's crazy. But um, in a nutshell, if I had to take a score on this Balvany Man, 15 Sherry, ooh, single barrel. Oh. Uh, my, I wish I remember what I paid for that. I think it might have been one thirty ish, but I'd have to go back and look. I can't. I, I don't quote me on that. I can't remember the top of my head. I want to say it was around one thirty ish. I think it's worth it though because the Abana is hitting around a hundred dollars typically, maybe even more in some markets. And uh, that's not aged. The 18 is good, but the Abelara 18 doesn't, I don't think, as good as this one. I really don't think it is. You can smell the power. I mean, it's just well done. And it doesn't even have to be cast strength for it to have that power. It's about 48, my sweet spot. Wow. Mm. We got to think about this guy for a score. Oh, my. We have the age, 15 years. So that's a big plus. I'm using Aqua Vitae's uh, ABCD uh, scale. Very well done. Aqua Vitae's got some new coins you should, guys should check out, too. Cast coins. Uh, I got to pick one, one myself soon. I don't have one yet. I'll have to get one. But, um, a, age, 15. Okay, B, bottling strength, 47.8. 48, we'll say. That's another really good mark. C, um, chill filtering, uh, non-chill filter. That's another good mark. D, dye. Is it dyed? I don't think it is. I mean, is it the darkest sherry, you know, I've ever seen? Hell no. But does it look natural for a 15-year-old sherry? Hell yeah, it does. So... I think all four have been uh, checked off. And I think that's why you sent so much quality in, in this, this glass. Balance is there. Finish is definitely there. Good mouth coat. 
Oh my, the only thing, and this is a personal preference more than a, a Dean, but I do wish it had a little more, maybe a little slight, just a teeny bit more sweetness in it. Then I think I would have given it a five stars, literally, even for a 15. Um, I miss, you know, there's not really much I would change to it other than that. Maybe I got lucky with a batch. I don't know if this 1993 is like a magic, um, you know, blend uh, of, of just existence and, you know, the batch pool itself. But um, this has made me more of a fan of the distillery, that's for sure. Um, wow. 475 seems really high on a 15-year-old scotch, but... It's really well done. I, I, I know a lot of these guys can afford these uh, Balvenie Tune uh, 1504s and some of this crazy three four hundred dollars stuff. Man, I would love to just taste what it tastes like. If it's better than this, I can only imagine. Uh, that being said, it's got sherry. I guess it could have some peat. It's not a peated scotch, so. I might have to ding it a little bit for that, maybe. Just personal preference. Sweetness, pea, absence. But, man, that's a damn good cherry bomb. I'm so puzzled. I'm going to score this. I'm thinking 4.5, though, is fair. I really do. I know it's high, but, man, it's damn good. I think 4.5 out of 5, 2.5 increments. I think is pretty damn fair. Let me know if you guys think that's about right. If you've had the single barrel 15 before, I, I, I think that's pretty much right on, but we'll see here. Let me read some comments. Um, Brian uh, says that Eric, uh, did a Buna cast strength to shield the heavily peated and said it was the best Isla he's had. Wow. So I, so, okay. So let me get this straight. Buna Haven, has a cast strength from their recent fish shield in 2018 that's heavily peated. Jesus, mother of God. <laughs> I've got to, I've, excuse me, but I've got to have some of that. <laughs> i got to get my hands on that. That sounds good. I'll try that. I wish Eric, uh, I might have to get with him and see if he needs anything where I can maybe, uh, Trade a sip for a sip for some salsa versus salsa or something. Uh, hopefully he watches on occasion, but I'm not, I don't know. Uh, if you're looking for a great non isla peated whiskey, check out the Emirate Bingle Tiger peated pork. Wow, hold on. <laughs> That's almost like a tongue twister. The Emirate Bingle Tiger peated pork pipe single cask. <laughs> Jesus. Long title, but fantastic. Limited release of 480 bottles and exclusive to United States. Wow, that does sound pretty good. Poor pipe, huh? Is it well done? Uh, I guess if it, if you if you think it is one of the great non isla peated whiskeys, it's got to be a well done port. It's hard to get. I mean, Glendronic didn't do it right, uh, in my opinion. I didn't like it. Um, I've had some spring banks that were kind of iffy on the port cast. Port casts are hard to do. Uh, this port pipe single cast thing, uh, I'll try it, but uh, man, um, it's hard to find a scotch whiskey that's port related that's done well. Mine outside of Lafroig, Lafroig's done a couple the Brodeer and the port with a carriages 2013, but um, wow, I'll have to check that out. Thanks for the heads up on that. I'll probably forget, but uh, I'll have to put it on my radar somehow. Uh, Lee says Benoit was legit before Billy Walker left. Now the jury is still out with Rachel Berry. She's left a lot of reputable distilleries. Lee's right, man. It scares the, sh the bejesus out of me. And now she's at Glendronic, which is one of the best. Please don't screw around with Glendronic. I beg you. If you got a recipe and it's worked in the past, you've got the casts, you've got the formulas, you've got what it takes, you've got the people, don't screw around with it, please, for God's sakes. Conservatism works in distilleries, I'm telling you. <laughs> 
Oh my. Bobby says the Cleriosis and the Sepindicum are both pretty good bottles from Baron. I prefer the latter, but would turn down a dream of the form. Probably he, I think he meant to say wouldn't turn it down on dream of the former, maybe, but um yeah. They're both good. Seven Dissum being better for sure. The refinement, the age is there for the 17 years. But for 10 years, it's a nice peated whiskey. I have to give them credit. Uh, everyone says, don't get me wrong. The 23rd, the 20 the 2003 will say peat week is nice peat. Nothing like an ala peat. And it's really pretty smooth. But I just didn't get other flavors. Okay. Yeah, you're probably looking for a little more complexity with that, uh, everyone. Um, I, I see what you mean there. Definitely. I, and that's the that's why I don't think I got into the uh, the Bunahav and uh, uh, the Toy Chick very much. I mean, it's a nice taste, I guess, if you just want a pita whiskey. But you're not going to get anything really outside of that with it. Um, the Kalbanak was a little better on the taste. Because it had more of an orange cream dream sickle kind of a thing going on, but the finish was absent, so that's why I didn't really get into that one. So I'm really particular on the uh, the peats as well. So I'll have to try. Hopefully, uh, I would not go out and buy a bottle. It sounds like, but hopefully, I could find like a taste or a sample or something that that uh, Belvini. Um, it sounds like you had the 14 peat week thing. I'll have to see if I can find that. Lisa says the Benrike uh, Solist uh, 17 has become much dark. Yeah, you can't find that stuff anywhere, it seems like. Everyone says Roy is out of coins. They went fast. Are you serious? Jeez, man. He sold out completely of coins. What the what, man? That's not cool. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to beg him to do another run and I'll have to find someone and bought a coin from him and buy it from him because I don't like missing out. Um, Rose Chun says, so what a PX finish on the Balvenie 15. Oh, you're asking probably what the Sherry type finish is. Is it PX? I would think that it's not because typically if it is they would say so. Um, this being not very sweet, I don't think it's PX at all. I'm leaning toward, towards Oloroso, but that's a guess. It doesn't say if it's Fino or if it's Oloroso or what kind of sherry is involved. Um, let me have another sip and let me tell you, and I can tell you why I don't think it's certain things off the taste. Hold on one second. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> Fino is going to be extremely dry, acidic, and salty if it's Fino. This is a great taste. It does have that smoothness. It has a really nice oily coat mount fill, though, that doesn't dry up too fast. I'm, I am not an expert with Balvenie by any means, but if I'm just going off of, of uh, hypothesis, uh, just my taste, like if it was dry, I would have said it was fino or salty or whatever. This is not, and it's not overly sweet, and it's got more of a tobacco note to it. I am definitely leaning more towards um, Oloroso in this sherry. I could be wrong. It could be something off the wall. All I know is it's a, it's a an European X sherry butt is the cast type used. European X sherry butt is all I get. It doesn't tell me um, the type of sherry, unfortunately. But... Um, it's it's good. It's well done. I like the I like the the balance. It's not overly sweet, but uh, everyone says I, I put the balance sherry just under the Glentronic eighteen. The uh, everyone I assume you're talking about this puppy here under the eighteen. Yeah, oh, man, that's a tough one. That's a good. It's 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 a it's a good it's a good fight. I'd love to see a Glendronic 15 revival and new ones coming out versus this guy because I think this guy would beat it. 
But with the 18, I think you might be on to something just because it's it's a little better of a mixture, better balanced, I think. More refinement, more age, I think, helps that. Even with just a few years, um, I can't I can't say you're wrong on that one. That's a that's a good point. Uh, Ryan says he scored it at 97. I guess he's talking about. Let's see, Ryan was talking about Eric Wade. Oh, on that uh, that Bonahaven. Wow, 97 out of 100 is freaking high as hell. Steven says he can send me a sample. Okay, um, uh, send me an email, Steven, if you're still around. Hopefully, uh, telex at outlook.com. That's T E. L E X Telex at Outlook.com. And uh, maybe I could send you some salsa on the side, possibly. Uh, we can chat about that. I really appreciate it. Um, everyone's saying that uh, to Lee that Rachel Berry took Bomar into the ground. Yeah. My home opinion anyone at Bomar that suggests releasing 40, point, 40 to 43% should be questioned. They soar high. At a high ABV, um, yeah, I heard that at IP, uh, but more agree. Independent bottlings, yeah. Um, the OBs are poor, yeah. Bobby asks if I'm planning on picking up any of the Diageo special releases and reviewing them. Oh, my, special releases, Bobby. Uh, are you talking about um, something specific like... Um, uh, I know Pityvac has a new 25 year, which is probably going to be crazy priced. That could be iffy because of the price. Um, I know Mortlock is releasing uh, a really nice base. Um, I think it's like a 12, 15, 18 year. That would be more on my price point. I could definitely get all over that. And I think Mortlock is still with Diageo, if I'm not mistaken. That could be wrong. Um, let me know which in specific you're looking at, uh, Bobby. I'm not sure, um, but I'm not I'm not opposed to looking at any Diageo special release as long as I can afford it. Uh, Steven asks, uh, actually tells everyone uh, I had 80s and 70s Bomar that were fantastic. I haven't liked anything I've tasted from Bomar in the past 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Um, Steven, I, I think you're on that. And it's funny because as you can see right here, I've got a little group of bone more. And uh, my first bone more was a 15 darkest. And I think it was intriguing because of the sulfur, because of the funkiness, along with the peat and the sherry balance. And at first, I was kind of not sure what to think of it. And it grew on me. And I ended up liking it, but the more then I go went go into these heavier mouth coats like your you know Balvenies and your Klein leashes and various other you know distilleries. And then I went back recently to a Bomore 15 Darkest, and that's I, I drank it. It wasn't that it was bad; it was just real thin tasting comparatively to those other whiskeys. And I'm like, what the hell happened? But I think it's only because I've tasted so many distilleries and I've, I really have got into the heavier mouth coat, um, which I think does affect the finish. And I do love a good finish. Um, I think with the lighter ones, even the Bowmore 18 has a good taste. But it, it, to me, it's so light on the coat that I hate to use the word watery, but it just has that kind of Glen going kind of feel to it that just doesn't give me the same, you know, oomph that I'm looking for with a whiskey. Uh, the best Don't Bowmore I've had is the Doris Moore. It's a third batch, also known as Tempest 6 over in Europe. It's a 10 year, very well done, has a better mouth coat, uh, but it, it's 120, you know, bucks. Um, the twelves and the the number one was okay. It's just really thin and and you know, I don't know. I, th I think there is something going on there with that. And I probably will take those and move them over. Maybe I should expand my Glen Scotia a little bit and go that way with it. 
or just go crazy with my Kilhomans because I do love Kilhoman. I've got five here, and I would love to have the whole thing filled with like 20 different Kilhomans because I haven't had a bad one yet. I have not opened the port cask from my friend Mr. Lee yet. I'm afraid to because I think I'm going to be kind of disappointed. And I've never been disappointed by a Kilhoman outside of the 100% Isla. I take that back. 100% Isla was a disappointment for me. It's just not my wheelhouse, but um, we'll see how that goes. Let's see here. Uh, Steven says Balvenie 15 is a LaRosa. Well, I, I, hell, I nailed it. That's just off of uh, just tasting. So I must not be uh, too far gone yet. <laughs> Thanks for the, uh, the, the information because it does help to make sure I'm not totally off. Uh, but, uh, yeah. I love Sherry, man. Oloroso, Fino, PX. Um, psh, I haven't had a Sherry I don't like yet. Let's see. Everyone says, which is why Rachel Berry worries us. Yeah. Steven says, true. That's why I'm buying Glendro single cast like crazy. Yeah. Those are expensive as hell, those, those crazy year ones, like 1970s, I've noticed. My God. Uh, Lee G says, Billy Walker by Glen Allenkey. I'm hoping that they become next poor man's McKellen. <laughs> Glen Allenkey, didn't they have a new release of bottles recently? I'm trying to remember if that was them. I know Glen Roth is dead, but Glen Allenkey, I thought my head. Yeah, Glen Allenkey had a new bottling release recently, I, I remember seeing I haven't had any other new stuff yet. I'll have to take a look at that. Our pronounced says the audio is releasing 10 special release bottles in late September. Don't have the list in front of me, but one is a Talisker 8 at 59.4. Woo! <laughs> I've already pre-ordered that one. Wow, I bet you have, my friend, because Bobby and I love our Talisker. It's uh, I haven't had a Talisker I haven't liked either yet. <laughs> oh, my. That sounds good. 8 at 59. Young, nice, Pete, hot. How could you go wrong? Shoot, I'm gonna have to get my to find me a bottle of that. Lisa says he bought a few of the 2018 Diageos, Clear 35. Wow, Agavol in 12, the Oscar 8, and the Cladach Island blend bottle. Yeah, I have high hopes. <laughs> Jeez, man. Kalila 35 distillery bottle? Are you shitting me? <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> oh, I'd love, I, I would love just a 30 Kalila, more or less a 35. Christ. <laughs> I'll go on 12, of course. I, I do have that. And uh, a standard eight I haven't had, but old Bobby hooked me up with the uh, old particular eight. We'll take a look at Bobby. I haven't forgot about you. We will uh, open that puppy up, maybe next review or the review afterward. And, uh, Take a look at that guy because I'm I'm eager to see what that's like. So I love the Talisker 10, man. Um, everyone's got to go. See you later, man. Have a, a good one. Uh, I'm I'm off tomorrow, but if you have to go in uh, tomorrow, everyone, I hope you have a good time. Be safe with the hurricane crap going on. Uh, not up really here in D.C. Maryland area, but uh, you never know with all this craziness going on where it's going to go or just people in general. Uh, Steven says, uh, take it easy night. Uh, Ryan says, if Bomar had done more whiskeys, like the Doris more the newest releases are supposed to be much better. Yeah. That would be cool. Which barely is a blender taste or not a master distiller. Yeah. Oh, he says, you won't find a Talisker in the U.S. You have to order it. Only seven of ten releases are hitting the U.S. market. Wow. Seven of the ten releases are in the U.S. So three are going to be outside, but I've pre-ordered a six bottle, so you might get some more salsa once I have one in hand. I love it. That's cool, man. All right, I'll have to um, I'll have to keep my eye out on that. So it's three of the ten are outside, and Talisker being one of them. That's interesting. Huh. You think, I mean, that's got to be one of their bread and butter releases you would think but i don't know diageo is kind of a, its own 
its own thing, its own mindset sometimes. But it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, Bobby. I'll, and if you ever if you ever are looking for something, Bobby, let me know. I don't. I definitely don't mind helping you out when I can. If I if I can, and um, let's see what we can do. Later, Lee. Lee's on Hurricane Watch. Uh oh. Yeah, I gotta turn my gotta turn my big TV on and take a look and see what's going on. Lee, you gotta get your ass out here to Maryland, man. Uh, your next uh, vacation, whatever it may be, because. I've got my fish shield 18 long of one sitting over here unopened. I've got a bottle of Freud 18 unopened. I've got a bottle of uh, LaFrog lore unopened as well. I've got uh, some stuff that we've got to take a look at and take a, you know, get up to petite sellers up in Maryland and maybe find us. I know now here's a scoop guys. Here's a, you guys that are, are gracious enough to, to hang out. i got some bad news for you independent bottle lovers out there. Um, I'm not sure how well known this is, but you heard it here first. Uh, I have a feeling. Exclusive Malt. You probably have heard of them. CWC, Creative Whiskey Society, um, Creative Whiskey Company, I should say. Um, I've got the guy's name really well well versed with picking bottles and whatnot. They have been bought by a Japanese distillery and they are about to, um, I think go exclusive with, uh, pulling back from the American market and, and taking things just on a Japanese level. So I have a bad feeling that even though CWC, uh, exclusive malls is one of my favorite, uh, independent bottlers that we're not going to see very many of them left. So if you do see those bottles out there, if you've had your eyes on them, you need to pick them up. I haven't told anybody that, that news I've been kind of holding on to it. Um, and the reason I bring this up, uh, Lee at my favorite uh, place up here, they have a Highland park 25 year cast strength. Creative Whiskey Society, uh, sorry, uh, Creative Whiskey Company, I keep calling them society, but Creative Whiskey Company, exclusive moths, 325, dude. We've got to get that bottle. <laughs> and if we don't get it soon, I have a bad feeling it's not going to be there. So I might have to pull some strings and just get it the next time I'm up there and just to, just to have it. Um, but... It's a sad day in my area because these, my, my, this uh, place I go to has a boatload of CWC bottles. Um, and anything I've ever had, Lagavulin, um, I've had a couple of those. Other distilleries I've had, they've all be, always been good. So uh, no problem, Steven. Thanks for hanging out. And um, I'm going to try to snag that. For 325, a 25-year-old cast drink Allen Park, legit sounds pretty damn good, I have to say. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully it's still up there the next time I get up there. My, my luck, man. Sometimes I go and I'll have my eye on a bottle and I get up there and it's gone. It's like you gotta be kidding me, but I can't go like this too much. <laughs> well, thanks so much for stopping by, guys. It's getting late and I appreciate your all's time. And hopefully see you next week soon. Uh, the time flies by when you're having fun. And thanks for uh, sticking by me. Give me a, a thumbs up if you don't mind before you go. And, um, uh-oh, Ryan just says F. <laughs> is, that a, is that your, your cursing F or is that just a, a, a F for fine? <laughs> F for fine. See you later. <laughs> Oh, my. Anyway, but uh, hopefully uh, you guys will uh, get better news So when you go out and, and look for the, some of these bottles. Um, I haven't really done any independent bottlings uh, on the show, so maybe it's time to get a couple on here before they some of them vanish because some of the good ones, man, you never know. They get bought up by these big companies and whatnot. No problem, Ryan. Thanks, uh, Jason, and uh, everyone else uh, for the uh, – the uh, camaraderie and the community you guys are always awesome 
it always feels like I have like thousands of people just just hanging out and and sipping and, and sharing. And that's what it's all about. Slanchava until next week.